let me switch gears on you here for a second. Sure. Because we're talking about Bullet Club, and you just said the fans went absolutely ate shit for them, right? For Cody. Mm-hmm. Let's bring up Joe White here for a second, okay? Let's bring up Joe White. Our good pal, Joe White. Joe White. Our good pal, yep. He always knocks the bucks for, oh, too sweet me. Oh, it's a, it's a gimmick that was used 25 years ago. Oh. Would you say most people in that arena for the Ring of Honor show went ape shit because they're cool? Because the Bullet Club is cool? Yes. So, okay, yes. So, it's still a cool... Without without a question. Can you explain to me why Joe White thinks like a moron sometimes? I, I mean, I could actually... I could actually... I'll actually say this, and I might get some heat for saying this, but I'm fine with it. Okay. Two sweeting each other at a wrestling show is probably more cool now than it was then. There... I would maybe agree with you. Because I think... I think if if you don't have revisionist history here, mm-hmm. um, if you go back to the click, yes, uh, wrestling wasn't overly popular when the click was the click. Uh, it was kind of bring gaining steam back, but it wasn't. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it was kind of more after. Yeah, after the click. Okay, so then you get the two sweet me thing from the NWO, but. There's a, a far majority of wrestling fans that view that as a heel faction. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think the the way the Bucks, uh, the way this this version of the Bullet Club uh, is being portrayed makes all that stuff like the cool thing to do. Yes. Right. Yes. I think the fact that the Bucks are running through the crowd too sweet and people. That every member of Cody Rhodes is doing it. Every member of the Bullet Club is doing it with the fans and everything else. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's a big deal. I, I really do. And hey, listen, proof's in the pudding. Yeah, you could go out. You could go out and trash the Bucks any six ways from Sunday. Oh, they never signed with WWE. The bottom line is, um, AJ left. Balor left. Or, 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 uh, fin, or Fergal Devitt. Mm-hmm left way before the bullet club even gained popularity i mean bullet club i mean bullet let's let's face it bullet club was not selling t-shirts when fergal devitt was there like they are now not even close right okay the young bucks are the driving force behind this thing right now in in the u.s you cannot argue it it's it's it, it's not even an argument you could not like them you could call them the young fucks you could say whatever you want about them the bottom line is they changed the game up mm-hmm. in the wrestling world. You know, I always talk about this with Matt Hardy and what he did for his type of guys. Yeah. And making it okay to not be in the WWE and okay to be on the indie scene. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Make, to make it profitable for yourself. Yes. The Young Bucks did the same thing, but they did it for the indie guy. And the, and the thing is, we just talked about it a little while ago. They put Bullet Club shirts in specific hot topics around the country. They sold out so fucking fast, they're going to put them in them all. Think about that for a second. This isn't this isn't uh, the machine. Mm-hmm. This isn't like this global conglomerate that says, oh, we got to push these t-shirts. They did it themselves. They did it themselves. You can't, it's crazy, man. It's the, never I would happened say before. this: the, the the greatest benefit that Fergal Devitt, AJ Styles, and probably even Doc and Carl to an extent did to the Bullet Club was going to WWE because the people who didn't know what the Bullet Club was really all about went and tried to find out, yep. and they found the Young Bucks, mm-hmm. and they found Kenny Omega. And they found the Gorillas of Destiny, and now Marty Scroll and everybody else that they brought in since then. They found that and were like, holy shit, this is pretty fucking cool. Because before that, they just sold Bullet Club shirts that said Bullet Club on them. Right. Now you got shirts that say Young Bucks. It just says Bullet Club on this. They all have a basic theme, but they're all specific to that wrestler. Mm-hmm. So now they've taken the Bullet Club shirt and, and almost rebranded it in a way. And now, every six months, they could release a new one and sell it. Yeah. It's genius. 
You know, you know already. If you if you watch the uh, being elite uh, video blog that I sent you, yes. Thursday, the day before the Ring of Honor pay per view, guess where the Young Bucks were? Where were they? They were at Converse World Headquarters. Oh shit! I mean, you, 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 they weren't just visiting. It, <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? The the Young Bucks are cutting a deal with Converse. To in some way release Young Buck sneakers because they had those specially made ones that sold so well. Right. The Young Bucks are almost their own little corporation. It's true. Yep. And and to me, forget wrestling, forget anything else. As a as an American, as a human being, mm-hmm. how can you not respect the way the Young Bucks have branded themselves? You gotta love it. You gotta. They're self made. Yep. They're self. Fucking made. <coughs> you know what? You, did you hear my show about? Uh, we'll get into we'll get into Floyd and Connor in a minute here. But did you hear my show yet? Yep. Okay. Great stuff. Do you remember when I I was screaming about the uh, quote unquote purity of boxing? Yes. Yes. Well, guess what? You wrestling people can take <laughs> the purity of wrestling and stick it straight up your fucking asses too, because no one cares anymore. It's 2017. Okay, nobody cares about what guys went through in 1985 on the road and everything else, because guess what? The guys of today, they're just that much fucking smarter because they decided to make themselves their own business. Yep. The guys who are not signed to the major company, WWE, I wouldn't even throw TNA in there right now because TNA guys need the indies just as much as these guys do. Sure, yeah. So you you need the indie scene. You need to be your own. You need to be your own your own company. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You're your own business. You're you're a uh, a subcontractor in a way. The young bucks have mastered that. Yep. And if you don't think every guy in that business respects what the young bucks have done and paved the way for them, you're probably fucking crazy. Because I know guys like Flip Gordon who a year ago had a real job and right now is a re- pro wrestler. And he just signed his contract with Ring of Honor. Right, yeah. Just signed it like a month ago. You know what I mean? He became a he became a full-time pro wrestler before he even signed a contract with a company. Mm-hmm. Young, in, in some way, shape, or form, I don't think I'm giving the Young Bucks too much credit here. They paved the way for a lot of this stuff. Yep. Merchandise yourself. The whole deal. Pro Wrestling Tees was built on the backs of guys like the Young Bucks. There's other guys too, don't get me wrong. But but for the for the sake of this argument, I mean it's hard it's hard to deny what these guys have done. Not only that, they've done it they've done it the right way. If you know anything about them, they they're they're not like druggies and partiers right. yeah. thing. They you Scott Hall, perfect example. Mm-hmm. Saying he loved the fact that Cody was in the Bullet Club in in New Japan because those guys went about the business the right way. They didn't do drugs. They didn't party. I mean, listen, why do you think Cody Rhodes saddled up with these guys? Exactly. Yep. For that. It's not, and it's not just dollars and cents. They're doing it the way he wants to do it. Yep. I don't know. I don't see the hate in the argument. I, I mean, and I think it's less and less... The guys like Joe who are out there to like to kill the Young Bucks, they're they're few and far between now. You could you could boo them as wrestlers. You could not like the way they work matches and too many super kicks and all that. And listen, to each his own with that one. But as far as what they've done for the business and for themselves and branding and everything else, mm-hmm. how could you shit on them? It's impossible, dude. Yep. It's impossible. It's amazing. It's amazing. You know, it's interesting too because, dude, I'm actually envious. I absolutely am. Oh yeah, dude. They're they're like they proved it, to, to everybody hey, how to do it. There's no secret about what the kingdom is doing right now. Mm-hmm. They're following suit, man. Exactly. They're not dummies. And they're not dumb. Yeah, I was just gonna say they're not yeah. dumb. Come up with a trendy fucking T-shirt, push it on social media, put it on pro wrestling tees, and have it at the you know have a, a similar one at the Ring of Honor show and everything else. People eat that shit up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they eat that shit up. Trust me, these guys are making more off merch at indie shows than they are for showing up. Yep. 
Yep. So I don't I don't see how you could hate on it. You know the the interesting thing about it too that you're bringing this up. If you look at it from the other side, I listened to I don't know if you listened to Jericho recently. I have not in a while. Okay, yeah, either, either I, have I. To be honest with you, I've been so into the combat sports. Mm-hmm. I've been I've been religiously listening to Brendan Schaub, whether it's uh, Big Brown Breakdown or Fighter and a Kid, and then I always throw in my Rogan stuff. And I haven't been listening to much else other than our content, our our content, right? As well. So, uh, other than that, that's pretty much what I've been listening to. And, I mean, it comes out to be a lot of fucking hours a week. <laughs> yeah, it does. It does, man. It's an investment. But right. I, I checked out Jericho today, and I saw he had uh, Alexa Bliss on recently. He gets a lot of good guests, boy. Oh, he gets everybody. It's crazy. And he's very he's very good at interviews. Like, honestly, I don't, I don't not listen to Jericho for, like, it's not that I don't like it. It's just I don't have time. But he's mm-hmm. a very... He, to me, his podcast is head and shoulders over Austin's. Oh, absolutely. There's no doubt about it. He's one of the best interviewers, I think, I mean, ever. I agree. He's <laughs> very good. Very good. But I threw on the Alexa Bliss interview. And it's so it's so interesting because she basically was talking about kind of the, you know, the inner workings of NXT. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and she was saying how, you know, when she got called up, she liked the freedom because, you know, you could drive yourself, figure out everything yourself. And Jericho where, asked her, where, like... Where, where you're going? Yeah, yeah. Like, for the next show or for whatever? For the next show, town to town, gotcha. all that. So, so NXT, they're... What are they bus tripping together? Yep, they all bus together. Really? They uh, so it's almost it's almost like minor league baseball. Basically, yeah. Wow, I didn't yeah. know that. So that's interesting. Yeah, she said they wake up. You know, they they wear their NXT track suits. You know, they all have the NXT track suit and they have to wear it and this that. And I'm thinking to myself, do these guys really want to do that? <laughs> yeah, I'm th- like, if you're the young bucks. Or, or or anybody on their level, you would look at that and go, "Are you insane? You could be doing what we're doing." I've been flying around. I've been flying around the world for years on my, you know, on yeah. my own here. And and you know, you know, you, it, it's a funny part. You bring that up because we, me and me and Jim were talking about it over the weekend. Like they have, they have, they have like the sweet tower, and the young bucks are five rooms down from us. You know what I said to him? The young bucks probably told Ring of Honor. Book me in a regular room and just make sure my contract's fucking legit. Right. Make sure my make sure my check is legit. I don't care about a suite. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, is like, if, you know, why why would you ever want to do that? Why would a Roddy Strong or you know, <laughs> you know, know what I mean? Like, like I I get it that when they're in Japan, that's kind of like the deal. You know, with New Japan, I've heard that's what they do. Mm-hmm. You know, they buses, shows, the whole thing. Right. But you're, you're not in Japan. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're in fucking Orlando, Florida, for the most part. Uh, you know, why would, why, I mean, if, why would you want to do that? I don't even understand it. I, I don't get it. I'll never get it. Like, to, to hear No wonder her... why show couldn't wait to get to the Yeah. Main. Yeah. To, right now, Bobby Roode is probably, like, in a class learning something. Like, What? That's scary. It's weird, man. It's Bobby it's... Roode. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you, 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 certain guys don't get an exception. <laughs> I mean, Bobby fucking Roode. No, she didn't Bobby say that. Roode. She didn't Bobby say that. Roode but I'm assuming has more experience in wrestling than the fucking guy training him. Right. Right. Actually, you'll laugh because Daniels in his little promo, his heel promo he cut during the TV tapings, was like. I could have went to NXT as a trainer, and I resigned with Ring of Honor, and this, that, and the other thing. And I'm just like, how old are you? Yeah, really. Are you fifty? <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, he's, I mean, what is his pro debut like? Ninety three. I mean, it's a long fucking time yeah, ago. He's probably but, up but there. But just, but just to me, some of these guys who've been around the business that long, like, the, I mean. Uh, what are what are they trying to accomplish by doing that though? Like, no, in all in all seriousness. Are you saying that these guys aren't mature enough in the business to get themselves where they need to be? Because you're you're signing guys who fly all around the country for indie shows that have a lot of responsibility that when they 
you know, get booked on a show to be there. Mm-hmm. So they've already shown they could do it. Right. Uh, what is, I mean, is it just, I mean, are they that fucking cheap? The, the company that spends $5 million on an entrance for WrestleMania can't pay for flights for these guys? <laughs> like, they, they should have their own plane. <laughs> it's I mean, true. Yeah, it's true. What, like, what is the reason for that? <laughs> Like we're teaching you the business, they are the fucking business. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I, like guys out there, get, workers, I have your back here. You are the business. They're not teaching you anything you haven't done. Why would you do it? I don't. I don't get it, dude. That's very strange to me. Mm-hmm. It is strange, and you you know what the weird thing about it is? As she's talking about NXT, and you're talking about the Bucks here. If Alexa Bliss, for example. Let's say she has a two-year run, and then they start, you know, pushing her down, and then she disappears. Is she? Let's say she shows up at NEW. Okay. Mm-hmm. Would she look at your boy there and go, "What do I say?" You know what look I mean? Like, Lombardi. Yeah, yeah. Would she say, "Mr. Lombardi, what what do I say when I go out there? Where's my <laughs> Where's my lines?" You'd probably laugh at her. Honestly, the way the way the way things are going in NEW right now, she'd be asking Taven. Ah, there you go. T- t- apparently, he's the head. Ho- like Lombardi's the boss, boss, but right. Taven's running the show. It just that makes me wonder sometimes. Wrestling. It makes me wonder. But I know you that know is I mean? scary. Like, hey, what can I say when I go out there? <laughs> I know it's <laughs> it's, pre- it's pretty bad, dude. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when you think about it, it's pretty it's pretty bad what they what they've done to the business. Right, and I'm not banging on Alexa Bliss. I'm just using it as an example. No, 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 not at all, not at all. Okay. Hey, listen again, pinnacle of the sport. Right, wrong, or indifferent, it's right. still the pinnacle. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, you take your shot. AJ took a shot, and he's doing it. Yes. I don't know if AJ's happy, unhappy. I guess we'll find out when his contract comes up. Right. Um, I wouldn't call his run bad. I actually think he's pretty much done as well as you probably could have expected him to do going in. Probably better than any thought we, we thought he would. Do. No, definitely, definitely. So, you know what it is? He's just that good. He might be. You know, like him and o- him Owens. You mm-hmm. know, they're they're just that good, dude. Mm-hmm. I, that's what it comes down to. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I just that. It, I didn't know like it went that deep into like it's. I mean, don't you feel like that's them saying like we have to show like when you're when the reason why I compared it to minor league baseball is because it's very similar. Or minor league baseball, you ride the bus, the whole thing. And I, I was actually thinking about it tonight because Tim Tebow got a promotion. He's in the Mets farm system, and he hit a home run in his first game, which is great. Right. And I'm thinking about this like as he's giving high fives to all his teammates, like all his teammates, like. You don't know him from a fucking hole in the wall. And this guy was one of the biggest names in sports. Yes. For a time period. And I'm like, you know, he's getting on a bus with them. And, you know, whether it's a gimmick or whatever you want to think, but you got to give Tim Tebow a little credit for, you know, just doing it the way it's done. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And, I'm, you know, that's kind of the way ball payers, you know, you get you, you, you earn your stripes to the big leagues by exactly. doing it this yep. way. Like. NFL players and NBA guys, they don't have – hockey players do. But NF, they don't have this aspect. And, and hockey players, it's to a lesser extent, the really good ones. But, you know, the baseball players, you go through the levels and you ride the buses and you learn, you learn how to be a pro and everything else. And it seems like that's what they're trying to do at NXT. And on the surface, it would make a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. But all the guys that are there – are the fucking business. They've been around forever. Right. They've done this on their own. They don't need that. It's not like you're taking a 19-year-old kid and being like, all right, kid, you're going to ride a bus. You're going to show up to the performance center. We're going to train you. We're going to mold you. We're going to do this. No, you're taking fucking Bobby Fish. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, Bobby Fish don't need the bus ride, bro. He just doesn't <laughs> need it. You know, he's wrestled in fucking everywhere in the world. <laughs> yep. So, I mean, my question is, why? Why are they doing this? Why are the workers, why are they Why are they allowing this to happen? I don't you know. You know what that is? You know, you know, honestly, I'm not even going to blame Vince for that. That's Triple H's fucking ego. It might That's, be. He, ha- he still has that 
I'm here and you're there. Ego. Mm-hmm. I'm try. I'm bringing these guys where I am. You know what I mean? Yep. And I like Triple H. Don't get me wrong, but for the most part, <laughs> the idea that everybody now because of NXT gives him a pass for all this stuff. That's fucking idiotic. I agree. <laughs> he, he's number two. <laughs> you know, it's a, you, know, you know, everything that's wrong. This is like your argument with, with White with, that I listen to. And anybody out there, you should get on 1650 and listen to. Every time Edward smashed White, he would go to like 1999 Gold Dust, some stupid <laughs> angle that didn't work, and bring up like one angle. Yes. I mean, Joe, I love you, but that's the stupidest way to argue <laughs> because you're 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 nitpicking little things that didn't work. Right. And you could do that. You could you could almost do that with anybody. You know, you could Theo Epstein has has broken two streaks in baseball with two different teams, but you can nitpick players right. he probably shouldn't have done, and he probably shouldn't have treated his outgoing manager the way he did when he got Joe Madden. But are you going to knock Theo Epstein for that after he just won a World Series? No. Well, I could have did it to him with Pritchard and Cornette, like before that course, whole thing you could happened. Have done the same thing, but you didn't take that rope. Exactly. Though. I could have brought up the hockey goon and the you know doink the clown, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on, how many different? Listen, you could you could go there with anybody, but the bottom line is this: it seems like right now, the wrestling fans at that point where. If it's bad, it's like, oh, Vince okayed it. You know, you know what I mean? Right. Like, it's still somebody else's fucking idea, though. You know, you know, whether it's good or bad, somebody else came up with the idea. Yes. So they came up. The, the bottom line is there is – It's I, I said it to White this week on the show. Mm. It's degrees of bad. It's not good. Yes. It's degrees of bad. It's that's a, Think about that. Think about what I'm saying when I say that. Yes. Saying Raw was better this week isn't saying it's good. Mm -hmm. It's it's bad degree was a little bit less. <laughs> and that's the way I explain it because it's still bad. It's true. I can still poke holes in all their stories. Mm -hmm. They give you nothing. I was talking about this with Diamond Dave the other day, my boy from the Ken Reedy show. Yeah. And we were we were talking about certain things in the way they're booked. And we came out ac ac across Enzo and Kaz. My point to him was, Kaz's promo last week, I liked it. Okay. I didn't like what happened before it. Jeff Edwards here. For the rest of this show, to listen to this show in its entirety, please visit Apple Podcasts, Spreaker.com, Search 1650-1650, 1650-PWAM, your new home for pro wrestling and more.